We've just arrived. We were on one of these buses just behind here, um, which cost us about six or seven euros. And they said, you need to go to the end of the line. Um, we're in some sort of square that you can see over here. Um, it only took us about 35 minutes to get here, which was pretty good. But the Morel Hotel, it's about half an hour walk. So we're gonna just slowly make our way through the city. Um, and hopefully it won't take us too long to get there okay so this is our lovely room that we have here and oh great we've got quite a lot of storage oh we've got some extra blankets as well so i'm not sure we'll need that it is actually quite warm um right now oh look we've got a little mini bar uh yeah it's very very cozy so i don't think we'll need any extra blankets We've got a nice tv here um and then i'll help you with that in a minute Dad. Yeah, yeah oh this is actually oh the door is a mirror that's kind of cool. cool and yes there's a bath ka -ching. i don't have a bath at home so i'm very happy about that we've got here we've got some soaps some other bits and pieces yes and there's a hair dryer so when we came in, we were given a free bottle of water, which is great. However, we noticed the top we couldn't open. So if anyone else gets stuck, it's actually in the mini bar, just in the top here, but you can't nick it. <laughs> That's what we get in the mini bar. Obviously, we're not going to be touching any of this. I've bought loads of my own snacks anyway. So on floor nine, this is where the spa treatments are. And then you've got this lovely outdoor part. It's nice seating areas. I want to do a little bit of laying down. And just about, oh, that sun is nice. Weren't too sure, because obviously we're in January, but um, yeah, that is nice and hot. So this is the gym area. And, oh, that's fantastic. You've got some water there, some fruit. This is such a gorgeous chocolate shop. Look at the size of these donuts. Oh my goodness, they look incredible. So it's now the end of our very long day but the flight was absolutely fine it was only a couple of hours getting the bus was really easy i already had on google the sort of numbers that i was looking for i think it was a1 or a2 and both go towards the city center and then it was about a 25 minute walk to our hotel which was still absolutely fine and you know we stopped and Took pictures and had a look so that was all right but by the time we got back i did need a bit of a rest uh, we've just had some lovely food at a gorgeous restaurant and then we went to this lovely chocolate cafe which uh, my dad had dessert unfortunately i'm on a detox from christmas um so couldn't quite have anything but they had the largest donuts i think i've ever seen which i wish i could try but never mind and tomorrow I'm going to try and see if I can pronounce it. I'm not going to try and pronounce it now, but I think it's the very Gothic cathedral that we're going to go to. We've got tickets for the afternoon, um, which should be quite good. The hotel's wonderful. The only thing is, I think I know why we got it quite cheap, which is fine. Um, it was £350 each, and that was for the hotel and the flight. And the hotel's really lovely. 
There's also a gym, which um, is free to get into, and they have a sauna, which is on the top floor, which I think you have to let them know like 15, 20 minutes before you actually want to use it, then they can turn it on. But it is being refurbished, so there is a lot of noise going on. There's a little, there's a lot of rubble on the floor, and there's lots of men working, basically, and they're traipsing in and out with all kinds of machinery and whatnot, so... So I don't think we'll be having breakfast here, but that's fine. We didn't get it included anyway. We wanted to sort of go out and find some lovely cafes. And it also means that the gym at the moment is free. There was no one up there today when I went, and I hope it will be like that the rest of the week because it meant that I can have my own music in the background or I can have an audio book or something because I might go and do my Pilates tomorrow morning as well. Um, so, yes, it just means the hotel is a lot quieter. And... Um, for my father and I, we're okay with that. That's all right. The weather at the moment in January is lovely. It's between about 14 and 17, but we went out with a very light jacket. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily short weather, but it's layers. So I've got lots of dresses, but loads of cardigans and even a scarf, you know, just in case the weather turns. It did rain a little bit earlier, but again, it was still warm enough not to have a coat on. So for January, I'm, I'm quite clean. So this is the changing room, you've also got a lovely shower there and you've got some towels and you've got a hairdryer but the hairdryer in my room is a lot better so I didn't really use that one. And this is on the top floor, I think it's the ninth floor. So you've got the steam room there but we're actually just going to use the sauna today which is nice and hot. You just need to let them know at the main desk about 20 minutes before that you want it turned on. Oh my gosh, Yeah, same. Wow. Unfortunately, my camera's not picking it up, but the glow of the light coming through those stained glass windows are absolutely incredible. Yeah.
buy any shoes to use, everything's much cheaper because it's not in pounds in Europe. Exactly, exactly. found this absolutely amazing, pretty much like an outdoor garden really. Yeah. Got some amazing lemon plants here. We were thinking they must have to take this inside the shop at the end of every day, but my gosh, that would be quite a job to get that all done. what is it actually called? Oh, there we go, Navarro. So I would say this is now our third day. We went to Sagrada Familia yesterday, which is the most incredible temple I have ever seen. It's just so magical and the stained glass windows inside they're so colorful and it makes the whole place sort of glitter with with different colored light especially when the sun comes through and we were lucky enough to have the sun yesterday not so lucky today i've had my hood up the whole time so my hair's probably a mess but i still wouldn't say it's been cold it's been a little bit chilly but it's still nice to walk around the city uh, yesterday I managed to get a couple of postcards that I wanted to send back home but I had no idea where to get any stamps from. I couldn't see like a specific post office. Um, you actually get them from tobacco places. So anywhere that sells, you know, like the e-cigarettes, I think it's called Tobacca um, and they have them all. I managed to get two which I think cost me €3.60 which wasn't too bad um, for England ones and yeah the food has been fantastic i would say it's similar to back home dinner is roughly around between sort of 15 to 20 euros if you want something like paella then obviously that's going to be a lot more that can probably be about 25 each person but the bars are amazing they don't really have pubs here i've noticed but the bars are just stunning the decorations are so lovely. One side of the wall might be full and covered with bottles of wine, but in some fancy place. The lighting is perfect. It's not too harsh. It's just inviting. That's the word that I want to use. So many places, even the little cafes are very inviting. But you can find little local cafes where you can get lunch for maybe six or seven euros. We found a place the other day, I can't remember the name of it, I'll stick it up here. And at the moment, because I was really bad over Christmas, I went completely off my diet and my eczema came back. Completely my fault, but I'm on a total detox. So no wheat, uh, no sugar, no dairy. And I thought, am I going to find that difficult? But it's actually been fine so far. There are loads of places that are gluten free. This cafe that we went to to have lunch yesterday, they used a cornbread and they had vegan cheese. So I had pulled, pulled pork, I think it was, or beef. I can't remember and it was sensational and I mean honestly the best lunch I've had in such a while we both really enjoyed it to the point where I think I might go back there tomorrow and they are roughly around eight to ten euros which I thought for lunch was pretty good um, but as I said there are also some burger places and some hot dog places that are like five euros but obviously I won't be doing those the one, the other thing that we noticed was um, parking. There are so many parking lots in the city to the point where when you're walking on like the main street where pedestrians are, you'll suddenly see a car come out and we've been caught out a few times. So now when we see a bit of an alley, we're like, is that a parking lot? Because it's, it's very odd to see all these cars where you know, human beings are supposed to be walking. And also the bikes, it seems that they're allowed to go quite a few places. So we're often trying to, you know, look out 
to see if we're not going to be knocked down by a bike. So yeah, the, the walks, the walkways and the roads are a bit confusing because some of the roads look like they're just for pedestrians, but in actual fact, they sort of bleed onto a main road. So you might just have a bus sort of going past you as well. And you're like, maybe I wasn't supposed to be walking there. I'm not quite sure. I think we've got Park Guel tomorrow. And for my birthday tomorrow, my dad is taking me to a flamenco show, which should be incredible. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Oh my God. Oh, you can go down. You can go down. Oh, wow. <laughs>
Go through here. Oh my god. I'm just gonna take it.
have a look around. So your ticket also includes going to the roof. You take a lift and this is what you get to see. It's, um, wow, it's quite spectacular. Look at the top of that. That's amazing. And there's my dad. Are you going to wave to the camera, Dad? day for it. They are stunning doors. I have no idea. Wow. The detail as well, yeah. So we're just out in the cloisters at the moment. If you do visit this cathedral, um, don't forget to visit the cloisters. My father and I almost completely missed it. Um, you have to go through this like massive wooden door that almost looks like you're not allowed to go through. However, if you're just not sure, I would recommend asking someone, where's the outside part? Because not only is it stunning here, but they've got, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Um, is it 3D? You put these glasses on and it's like an immersive kind of feeling. So it's like you're pretty much flying above the cathedral. The way they've done it is incredible, but you, you can miss it because we were about to walk straight past it. So if you see lots of people sitting down with these weird glass things on, definitely go there. I think it lasts about five minutes and it's so much fun. Um, I think it's like the new gaming world. Lots of people have tried these things, but I've never done it before. And I didn't think they would do it for a cathedral, but it was brilliant. Because I've always wanted to know what it would feel like to be right at the top inside a cathedral. And now you can actually do it. It was, yeah, it was brilliant. Okay, so for those of you who are thinking of staying at the same hotel, which is Hotel Balmoral, I think it's called, it was the perfect place because not only was it like very very central it just meant that my father and i could walk anywhere you don't have to catch a bus we didn't have to faff around with getting the um metro or anything even though it's very close by but we're avid walkers my dad's been walking for years and years so he didn't really mind and i'll just see if i can try and remember where everything was so sagrada familia was roughly around 40 to 45 minute walk but we were very slow, you know, we had a coffee, we went into a couple of shops, so it might only take about 30 minutes from the hotel. Then the Parc Guell, that did take a little bit longer, I would say maybe 50 minutes. Then the cable car, that was about an hour, just over an hour. Um, if you wanted to go towards the sea, that would definitely take over an hour as well. The walking tour that was started outside the Barcelona Cathedral, that was about 45 minutes as well so still I would say it's all in walking distance and we would always usually stop halfway go to a bakery have a coffee or something and so it never really felt like it was too far away it was only at the end of the day when we'd been walking around for maybe eight hours that we got a bit tired but still that's what I liked about it because I didn't want to have to look up the train times and the buses and all that sort of thing and actually everything that we wanted to see um, was pretty much in the city centre we didn't feel like we needed to go out anywhere else now it's really loud so I'll see you a bit later
Okay, so I'm just going to quickly talk about the paella here. It's obviously the traditional thing to eat, which is amazing. But it can sort of catch you off guard because you'll get a massive cast iron dish and you might think that that's 22 euros for that whole dish. It's not. It's per person. So these big ones are usually for two people. So the first night we thought we were paying 19 or 20 euros for both of us to share and it was each, which was okay for the first night but we couldn't afford that every single night. Um, and there are a few other smaller ones for lunchtime that are quite little dishes and they're happy for you to sort of share. But in the evening, the bigger restaurants, just be aware that usually it's per serving and they can go up to about 22 or 23 euros. And obviously every night that gets quite expensive. So we found a lovely um, Indian restaurant tonight, which is gorgeous. I'll put a name up of it here. And um, it was only about a 10 minute walk from our hotel. Okay, so there's one thing that we've noticed is that there is parking all over the city. When I mean parking, I mean there are like inside parking places, which means that sometimes when we're walking past, just out of the blue, a car will just go straight over the walkway. Um, and I think we've almost been run over it several times and there's bikes that just go everywhere. And even though it might say green for us to walk, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. So still look, because even though it's red for some cars and bikes, they don't care. If they can see that there's no pedestrians walking, then they'll just go for it. Um, so sometimes we have been a bit wary um, to you know, look either side and then look either side again, just in case, because sometimes when it looks like not only a pathway, but a place just for pedestrians, we've gotten that wrong and a car's come whizzing past us. There's not even markings on the floor for us to know that a car is allowed to go there. So it's kind of just a bit all over the place. So I would just say, if you're in Barcelona, just be a bit more vigilant when you're crossing the road. So I have to rave about this cafe that we found called Honest Greens. There were actually quite a few that we saw in Barcelona, super healthy. A lot of it was dairy free, gluten free. We had a cauliflower brownie, which was really gooey. Um, not what we expected. The prices were really good and the whole venue just looked so cozy and kind of authentic, but kind of raw at the same time. So I definitely recommend if you have any dietary requirements, go to this cafe. I'm now back home from my incredible holiday and we learned a lot about Antoni Gaudi or is it Anthony Gaudi? Anyway, wow. The things that we saw that he had made was incredible. And we went on this amazing free walking tour. At the end, they just, um, you know, you just give whatever you feel, um, some sort of a tip or, or whatever, depending on how good it was. And this lady was absolutely amazing. So I definitely recommend going on this walking tour. But she actually told us, yeah, quite a lot about him. And actually Sagrada Familia, the first structural temple church thing wasn't actually from Gaudi it was someone else but I think the investors didn't really like it that much and they said oh you know your apprentice we actually like his work and his ideas seem pretty cool and so he actually took over it and he said is it all right if I change a few things and actually from the first picture of what it was supposed to look like to what it is now it's completely different but obviously they did like the change and it was awe inspiring. I have never seen a structure quite like this before. It was like a fantasy novel had thrown up on the outside of a temple. The detail was, as I said, something that I've never seen before. I've seen so many cathedrals and churches and they've been lovely to look at, don't get me wrong, but this was just something different. And apparently it's been in construction for 140 years and it still hasn't been built. It's still ongoing. Uh, my mum told me actually she went to Barcelona and a friend said that they went to Barcelona and they weren't even able to get in, which was quite a few years ago now. So I felt privileged that, you know, I was actually able to get tickets, which I think were about 26 to 30 euros. Um, and I was happy to pay that. When you have a look inside, it's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. So apparently Gaudi, he really loved 
um, nature. So a lot of the sort of designs inside, even the columns look like sort of tree trunks and they sort of sprout out at the top, which actually help a lot to hold the entire structure up but it does look a little bit more like fantasy and you can imagine creatures coming through the forest because of course you've got the stained glass windows with all that multicolored light coming through and you think oh I feel like it's a sunny day and I'm walking through a lovely quiet forest and yeah there were two other places that we went to that he designed as well but the walk on the walking tour this lady she told us how he actually died which is a bit awful really so I think he was in his 70s and he'd sort of let himself go a bit so he wasn't really washing very well and he wasn't shaving so he looked a bit homeless basically and he was walking out on the street one day and a woman shouted at him like oh my gosh no be careful and just out of the corner of his eye he was like oh there's a tram right okay cool I'll step back but then he didn't realize that there was a tram coming in the opposite direction and he got hit now, most people just thought, OK, well, this is a homeless guy, so we're just going to take him to like a humble hospital just round the corner. He was there for a few days until someone recognised him. They were like, oh, no, we've got to put you in a private hospital and, you know, all the investors will they'll pay for all your medical bills. And he said, no, I'm a humble man and I want to stay in this hospital. But um, unfortunately, he did actually get an infection and he did pass away. So it just sort of shows you the, the type of man that he was. Uh, my father actually bought a book all about him. It was very interesting. We were reading it in the hotel room. And of course, his ideas back then were very outlandish and people weren't quite sure because, you know, it was very much outside the box of what they're used to. Um, but eventually, obviously, people were like, oh, I think he's actually a bit of a genius. He's quite amazing at what he has achieved. And out of the three places that we went, um, I think Sagrada Familia was my favourite.